So Liam Casey here. So before we talk about your, your business LMC growth, you know, you're into real estate, you help all the realtors kind of with marketing and whatnot, you know, yeah. there's one thing being a real estate agent and one using the right tools to get the job done. Right. There's so many players and you need to access these tools to get the job done. But before we even talk about those tactics and the marketing strategies, kind of give us your origin story as a marketer, entrepreneur, real estate investor. Um, so I guess like the very first where I kind of always like to start it is like the very first time I got into entrepreneurship in general, which was um, in year 12 in my last year of high school. And I saw an ad for this entrepreneurship event where I didn't really know what it was, but it was like a weekend competition for um, the, essentially like the, the motivation behind it was to start up. Um, you have to like meet up with a, a, a random group of people, create a, a startup business idea and then pitch it to like a board of judges and whoever came up with the best idea won the competition and like went on to future rounds and got like coaching and mentoring to develop the idea. Um, and so I went and did that um, and we ended up winning that competition. We came up with an, an idea. The idea was this, it was like an app, which was a, it was like a navigation app for large um, like shopping centers or airports for people to like navigate around, um, like help you find your way back to your car and never navigate around the, um, the building. It's a really random idea, but we, 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 we won the competition and then um, we had to, we were still in high school and then we had to like prepare for this next pitch where we were actually pitching in front of investors um, and we were like up against university students. And so that was like the first kind of, that was the thing that introduced me to entrepreneurship and got me excited about it. And it was the first time that, um, cause there's nothing in like really in, unless you're actually in business, there's nothing in like high school or anything that rewards you for business or entrepreneur entrepreneurial efforts and like the way that most kids seek success or like are rewarded for success is through academics or sports mm -hmm. and so it was the first thing that i'd received re validation for and like gotten an award for for something outside of sports or or academics and so that was really important and that was the thing that kind of sparked the sparked the interest and kind of validated that this is like it's an option even though it was a competition and it wasn't like re a real business it kind of yeah that was the first thing that got me into entrepreneurship and then that kind of fizzled out nothing really ended up happen happening with that um and then I ended up going to university to study business straight after high school um but I'd always had that kind of desire or I, I always knew that I was going to work for myself I was going to start a business I just didn't know what it was um <clears throat> and so is about halfway through my degree, which is about two and a half years ago now, or three years ago now, um, that I was just kind of going down the make money online rabbit hole um, and looking at all the different business models that there are between like drop shipping, Amazon FBA, real estate wholesaling, um, copywriting, coaching, consulting, selling courses, running a marketing agency. And so like when I found the, the SMMA <laughs> space, um, that was the first, that was the business model that like straight away I was like, yeah, this is the one that I want to do because I've always been into marketing and advertising. And that's been like in business, the thing that I'm most passionate about and the thing that I liked. So when I saw that you can, you can start this business model called a social media marketing agency, I was like, this is perfect. So I just took a few courses um, and just, yeah, just put, put my head down tunnel vision into learning that business model. And the real estate niche was the first niche that I started serving um just because it made the most sense to serve um it was the first industry that made the most sense to actually charge um a high retainer for due to the high high transaction value of a, a real estate sale um and so that allowed me to charge what what i wanted for my service and what it makes sense to have a sustainable business model um and so i know i also saw the biggest opportunity to actually serve that industry because they especially in australia they were so behind um, in terms of their social media marketing. Um, so that allowed me to just go full, full steam ahead and go, okay, I'm going to do this business model for this industry um, and I'm going to make it happen. And so I did that um, all throughout my degree. Um, and then I graduated just uh, December, 2019 and decided to yeah, go 
into running my marketing agency full time. And I did that all, all up until yeah, all of 2020. Um, and it's been going really well. Um, now up until this point, I've started doing some coaching and mentoring for other marketers looking to start their marketing agency. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of the origin story. Wait, so do you think, or do you recommend for anyone creating their SMMA business to not do everything, but really focus on one category, one industry, one niche? Absolutely. It's absolutely essential. I think that when you, when you're starting out, if you don't have that clarity on what niche you want to serve then you should dabble in a few and you should figure out what niche is one you can because there's a, there's a balance between a niche that you have an aspiration to serve and you think would be good to serve based on your your interests but it pract- practically they might not be an actual it might not make any sense to serve that business mm-hmm. because they might their customer might not have a high lifetime value or it might not have their profit margins might not be high so it might just not make sense to serve that niche so you have to find one, you have to find a niche that you enjoy serving and that you can serve and get, you can deliver good results for, um, and then focus your efforts on that one niche because you're, you can't build your internal business systems and processes efficiently. If you're serving all of these different niches and you're serving, you're delivering all these different versions of your service, it's completely inefficient and it's very hard to create, um, create systems for, for that type of business um, and also all of your efforts compound when you're working on a single niche because you figure out how to sell to that type of client you figure out how to reach out to them you figure out um, you figure out how to get better results for them every time you deliver a result for that client you're learning and that's going back into the next client um, and all the testimonials that you're getting all the previous clients that you've worked with helps you sell more clients within that niche where if you're you know you're working with a hairdresser and then you're trying to sell to someone that has a landscaping business, not like the, 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 someone, the person that owns the landscaping business doesn't care that you got the hairdresser 20 clients in a month. You, you want to show them a testimonial from a land True. from another True. landscaping company. So mm-hmm. yeah, focus on one niche. So you mentioned that in Australia, the marketing, you know, the marketing scene wasn't too strong that they weren't up to date. They were kind of behind. What was it exactly? Were they, of course, in the US, you always hear about Facebook ads. So in Australia, was that something that was in the come up? It's just that there was less of it. Like there was still people, there was still real estate, there is still real estate agencies running Facebook ads and a lot more now, a lot more. Mm -hmm. Um, But especially when I first started out, it's like there was a lot more real estate agencies that just weren't running ads altogether um and that still is the case um one thing that's a big difference as as well is that a lot more real estate agencies in the u.s um are leveraging it the business models are slightly different but a lot more the real estate industry in the u.s is leveraging um isa teams a lot more which are inside sales agents where essentially they're like call centers or people who are just dedicated to cold calling and nurturing databases and leads Mm -hmm. whereas in australia um, that role hasn't really been created yet. Um, and there's no real companies in Australia that offer that service for just yet yeah, calling and nurturing databases. Um, so that's, that's an element as well where Australia is still, still behind. So you kind of saw a hole in the market. Now, <laughs> out of curiosity, did you pick the real estate niche and the marketing um, model here for your SMMA business out of your passion for real estate and marketing? Or did you just do it because you... Uh, saw a hole in the market because the way I see things as an entrepreneur, like entrepreneurs, they have you know a passion about one certain industry and they dive into that long term, right? And then others they see something that they're not into at all. You know, it can be a guy, a big buff guy that in, that's into cosmetics, but the reason why he's into cosmetics is because he saw a hole in the market and he saw the vision to fulfill it. So in, in your story, in your case. What was it? Was it kind of a bit of both? Were you passionate about real estate and marketing or you just saw a yeah. hole in the market and you, you're like, I have to go in it? Yeah, it, I, um, yeah I didn't go into it because I was passionate about real estate at all. It was just, it was mainly because I saw the opportunity. Okay. And um, yeah, because I, I, like the part that I'm passionate about is just more the game of business in general and just mm. like the process and making the business work. Um, well, that. Not specifically who I'm doing it for because Mm. like in all honesty, running ads for real estate professionals, isn't that exciting at all. Like it's pretty, pretty boring to be honest. Um, But the actual 
like taking a step back and just looking at the whole process of and the game of making the business work um mm-hmm. and running the business and scaling it up as much as possible that's that's the fun part and just like knowing where where i'm headed um is the motivation behind it yeah and just kind of to add on to that you know what well, you just said kind of reminded me of, of school right because you can go into a math class or any class of that matter and do a certain you know learn a certain topic and then you can ask why am i doing this but the fact that you create your own say you're going to create your own product from scratch either that's you know an engineering product or, or something the fact that you need to use these principles to make that product is the fun part but if you're just learning the principles just because then you're not going to be having as much fun right so for example in your case if you just learn facebook ads you know for real estate agents if that was like a course it'll be boring maybe but the fact that you're doing it for your business makes it a lot more attractive right now Absolutely. what was the next step how did you get your your very first clients did you offer free work or did you use your local bubble friends and family yep. how did that play out um i literally just cold called um the first thing that i did it was just pull up google um googled real estate agencies and just looked at like the closest 20 close to me and i just copied down all their information onto a onto a google doc um and one by one i just called them all up and literally the very first one that i called um said yes to me coming into a meeting with them that that same day that i called them up um and they ended up saying yes they ended up saying yes literally the very first client that I cold called, which is crazy. Like that never happens, <laughs> that never happens. But I think I was really lucky in that sense because that gave me like the instant gratification that it like this, this thing's gonna work. Um, but I went to an in-person meeting, which I think is really important that it like when you're, when you're first starting out to get your first clients, you wanna do absolutely as much as you can to stack the odds in your favor. Um, because when you're first starting out, the odds aren't in your favor. You've got no experience. You've got no testimonials. Mm -hmm. You've got nothing. So one of the things that you can do to stack the odds in your favor is go to an in-person meeting because it's a lot harder to say no to someone when they're standing right in front of you and they've, you know, presented something to you. Um, and so that's what I was thinking anyway. And that's what I did. So yeah, I called them up, asked for an in-person meeting, went down there. Um, I literally just like had my crappy sales script (laughs) written out that, I hadn't even practiced yet. And I was like reading through it while, while I was, <laughs> while I was presenting to them. Um, and they said, yes, it was like a thousand dollars a month um, with, uh, I think it was like $500 ad spend. Um, and that was it. I landed my first client and then it kind of just snowballed from there. And that's how I got my first like six or seven clients was just cold calling people um, asking about what, what they were doing. And I would always cold call people who I could tell needed help. They weren't running ads or they were running really bad ads asked for an in-person meeting um, and that, that was working. Um, so yeah, that's how, it got, that's how it got kicked off. So to provide context here, what did you offer? Did you offer more leads for the real estate agents and then it was on them to close it down? Yeah, pretty much. So okay. the, the service that I was offering and which is still what, still what I'm offering, but just like a little bit of a different version is Facebook ads to generate leads um, and uh, SMS and email follow-up follow-up campaigns Mm -hmm. um and so what yeah so the main the main type of lead that i'm that i'm generating is seller leads people who are looking to sell their property um sometimes doing buyer leads as well but that's the main thing that's the main thing that i'm selling yeah sellers okay so in your very very first client you know you said that the odds were against you you didn't have much experience but you got you got your very first client right how nervous or how comfortable did you feel and how confident did you feel about making an ROI for your client? And did it go down like that? Did it go well? Not confident at all. <laughs> Not confident at all. Well, I, I, yeah, I'd never run, I'd actually never run a Facebook ad before mm-hmm. and I was selling them Facebook ads. And so I think that's one thing that, that is almost important about this, about any business model is that you kind of have to give yourself a bit of blind confidence even though if it's not justified and you just Mm -hmm. have to, you just have to do it because you're never like, how are you, how else are you going to learn? How else are you going to give yourself the opportunity to improve your service or actually figure out how to do it? Like you might as lots of people do free trials and things like that um, for potential clients when they're, when they're first learning. But I mean, like if you can, why not get paid to learn on the job? Um, And it also 
makes it real. It also makes it a real business transaction and it places that responsibility on you because you have been paid for it. And I think it forces you to learn quick, quicker and it forces you to level up because you have been paid. Mm -hmm. um, and it also gives you the resources to do things that you wouldn't be able to do to actually deliver the service, like maybe purchase that software, buy that business tool, you know, pay for that, pay for that course. It's actually going to teach you how to get the results. Um, I think that that was really important too. But yeah, I wasn't confident at all that I could deliver the, not at all. Like I, I had a general idea of the strategy mm -hmm. that I was delivering to them. And I think that is important. Like when you're selling, especially in your first clients, you can't just sell the result. Like you have to, you have to understand how you're going to get it. You have to have a general, you have to have a general game plan, which I did, mm -hmm. um, but I just hadn't actually done it before. So I couldn't say that I had hundred percent confidence. Um, but yeah. So that answer your question. No, yeah. So let's make a, a giant leap here. So how does your block diagram kind of look like your framework in helping real estate agents get more leads? It's essentially taking the um, the things that they taking the, the tasks that real estate agents traditionally do manually um, and converting that into an automated marketing funnel so that they can do less manual tasks and focus on selling to warm warm leads and serving serving warm leads so we reduce the need um not completely wipe out but we kind of we're, we're pretty much just adding on an extra pipeline and an extra stream of new opportunities to acquire listings um and so the majority of the ways that people are doing that is cold calling door knocking um like physical advertisements billboards um, mailers, uh, brochures in, in people's letterboxes, um, cold calls. Um, that's most of them like circle prospecting. Um, and so what we're doing is we're helping and also like leveraging their referral network. We're helping people. Yeah. Add on a source of new revenue, which they don't have to lift a finger to create, um, and comes to them or automatically. So that's really powerful because um, they can keep doing all the things that they're doing and make more money, or they can optimize their time to, to serving um, and following up with leads that are a lot more hot that they didn't have to work to create and they can make even more money. So that's essentially, yeah, in a nutshell, what we do. So to break it down even further, when I think about this whole system that you've created with the Facebook ads, you know, I think the first thing here is uh, what kind of campaign you have to run here. So would it be a, a conversion ad? And then of course, did you have to literally take pictures of the properties or was that kind of supplied by the, the firm or the real estate agent? And of course you, have to go, you got to do the copy, um, the ad spend, and then all the email and SMS flows. So kind of can you give us like a, a more in-depth breakdown of how that is done. Like, did you actually have to take pictures of the properties themselves or did you already have uh, the creative for you? Yeah, def definitely don't have to, do, to take the pictures ourselves. So the, two main types of campaigns that we run to generate sell leads is a um, free valuation type ad, which is a, um, which is a marketing strategy that the real estate industry has been using for decades, but positioning it slightly differently and doing it in the right way with the right images and the right ad copy and the right um, lead capturing sequence off, off the back end of that allows you to convert a lot more. And the, the primary ways that people, that the real estate industry generates valuations, not, through digital marketing is cold calling, door knocking, um, and sending out mailers. And so this does that on Facebook and it allows you to generate, um, valuation, your free valuation inquiries for a lot cheaper, at a lot larger scale. So that's the first type of ad. Um, next is free eBooks. Um, so like sellers guides, uh, there's a bunch of different e free eBook topics that we use to generate, to generate leads. Um, and so those two types of campaigns don't require, images of like specific properties um we've got image templates that we use from the that we create from the client's existing content um and then the other types of campaigns that we run are um like just listed and just sold campaigns which is when a property just goes on the market we run an ad for that property and when a property sells we run an ad for that property and all the images for those properties are always already uploaded to some kind of listing portal whether it's on zillow whether it's on um, the client's website or something like that. And we just pull the content from their website 
um, in terms of the SMS and email campaigns, those are already built out in a chatbot template that, we, that we've that we got. Um, we use the tool called ManyChat, which hosts um, Facebook Messenger chatbots, and that allows you to build out pre-existing templates so that you've got all of the email and SMS campaigns already built out. Um, and you transfer that over to a client's account when you're starting to work for them. So what do you think is the hardest thing? Because there's so many variables, it's so dynamic. Of course, you're, you know, doing the marketing part, but in terms of the sale, uh, was your strategy where, did you put a framework where it was a impulse buy? I know this is a very high ticket item. So did you have to provide a lot more value to the potential client customer and then use retargeting campaigns to see if they do want to acquire that property, for example. What, what, what's the part of the, the, um, because like you're selling, you're helping real estate, real estate agents sell properties. Right. And yeah. of course these are high ticket items and it'll be very hard. I think of course the main objective here is that you're not going to have them buy now. You're going to have them meet the real estate agent. Okay. Right? Yeah. 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 So the, the main type of lead that, that we're generating, yeah, I thought, I thought you were asking like my sales process oh, no. to real estate agents. But um, so like when we're generating a lead, we're generating um, someone who is inquiring to have their property valued. And so, oh, okay. so that, that's not, we're not generating a lead or an inquiry for our client to say like this person is ready to sell now and they want to sell with you. It's that this person wants to find out how much their home is worth. Mm -hmm. And because that we know that, someone's only interested to find out what their home is worth is if they have some level of intent to sell their property. And so if we have a name, phone number, and email of someone who has a level of intent to sell their property, then our client can go through their sales process to acquire that person as a client for their business. And so we only need to generate an inquiry for someone who's interested in finding out what their home is worth, um, which includes a name, phone number, and email, the address of their property um we ask them what their time frame that they intend to sell in as well um and that's what that's all you need to generate you don't need to in your marketing efforts you don't need to completely take them from zero to i want to sell my home with this person it's just i'm interested in finding out what my home is worth okay got it yeah. and now what about the terms of uh the sales process of getting the real estate agents to work with you you know of course they're paying you you said in the beginning a thousand dollar retainer plus $500 in ad spend. I'm pretty sure that that has increased, but how do you kind of convince them? Because like you said, Facebook ads wasn't a really popular thing in Australia. Now it is, but maybe a lot of these people, a lot of these real estate agents were clueless. So how do you kind of convince someone or tell them that, look, this is the new thing that you should really hop on and we can provide a lot of value for you. Yeah. So like at the, in the very beginning, I would be reaching out to anyone and everyone, but now, um, I look for, because it's, it's so much harder to take someone through all of the hurdles from not being convinced on Facebook ads at all to convincing them that they need, convincing them that they should be advertising on Facebook and then that they should be spending this amount of money and then that they should be working with you. Mm -hmm. I, I'd rather be talking to someone who's already sold that they know that they need to be on Facebook, that they need to be, gen that's a, a good way okay. to generate leads and they need to be executing on it more. Um, and all I'm convincing them of that we are the best at doing that and we should be the ones to partner with. So the way that I have been doing that is just one prospecting through Facebook. Um, my, yeah, that's, that's the main prospecting method that I use to generate clients because I know that they're already on Facebook. So they, and then looking at for people who are running some kind of ads already, maybe they're just boosting posts. Maybe they're already running some poor ads or maybe they're just putting out content reg regularly. And that shows me that there's some level of intent that they know they need to be on Facebook. Um, those people to sell to are a lot, a lot easier. So yes, you still talk to people who have never like considered using Facebook before. Um, they don't run ads, but yeah, you just kind of have to give them a basic implement, like a basic walkthrough of how it works, why it's beneficial. Um, at the, and at the end of the day, like the, the potential client only cares about one thing is like, can you get them the result, which is how, can you bring me more listings every single month? Cause that's okay. what's money in the pocket for them. So all you have to do is you just have to show them how you're going to do that um, and why it's a good method to, to do that. Um, 
And then it's kind of a no brainer if you do that in the right way. And it's kind of scary. I mean, at least in, if I were like a, a real estate agent and I were paying someone a thousand dollars plus a five hundred dollars for for the ad spend, you know, every month. Uh, was there a way that you can kind of guarantee them results? You know, because of course everyone wants to see an ROI. Of course. What what we can guarantee is like a quota of leads mm-hmm. in a certain time frame but we can't guarantee the client's closing rate. Okay, what we that's do, their responsibility. Yeah, that's their responsibility. What we do to project ROI is we look at the client's existing sales figures and existing conversion rates on the metric that we're giving them and the, the metric that we're optimizing for, which is the amount of valuations that we're giving them. Because that's a business metric that real estate professionals already optimize for and they will already be, be generating and acting on a certain amount of valuations every single month so if we take their existing conversion rate and we show them how many we're going to bring them um then we can figure out what their conversion rate is going to be on the on those leads and we can even pull that pull that back and lower the conversion rate um and show them that usually it's it's a no-brainer of how how many potential listings they're going to convert Mm -hmm. so you think nowadays as a social media marketing uh agency owner you know you could have focused on local businesses you know, local real estate agents, so you can see them in person, face to face. But do you think now it's almost essential because this can be a fixed market? And, you know, the average, at least in the U.S., people live in their homes for, you know, at most, you know, 10, 20 years, maybe. I think I don't know the stats to it, but basically, not everyone's gonna stay in their home for a couple of weeks. It's more of a long term thing. And if you're if you're literally working in your hometown, I think or a period of time, things are gonna look dry. So. Was that the case? And if so, do you have to expand to other markets? Or not other markets, but other towns, maybe all of Australia, and you can do more of a virtual meeting like Zoom to get more clients. Clients for my for my business? Yeah. I mean, because you said you went to like in-person meetings or was everything yeah. virtual? So you got to, okay, wait, was it virtual or in-person? Yeah. So when I first started out, it was in-person meetings, but okay. now, now I work with clients all over the world. Like I've got clients okay. in the U.S., I've got clients in Canada, clients in New Zealand and Australia. So that's the, yeah, the great thing about this business model is mm-hmm. that you can acquire, I, I don't take any in-person meetings anymore. It's all over Zoom. Um, that's the great thing about it. You can work with a client anywhere in the world. Huh. So wait, what's the challenge of literally working with people around the world? Because there might be different infrastructures, different, you know, paperwork or, you know, of course you're, you're used to working in your hometown in your country, Australia, but if you work with people in the US, Europe, there might be different things, different tweaks, different nuances that you have to learn. So was that kind of a major challenge in Not terms really. of work? No? No, the, the real, like there, there's some slight nuances, but um, overall the real estate industry has like, from a marketing standpoint, um, every home seller has the main core motivations. They, when they want to sell, they want to sell for as much as possible and for as quickly as possible. And so that's all your kind of um that's all you're playing on in your marketing efforts um and so wait yeah from, from a marketing standpoint there's not much that had to be changed it's more from um understanding the client and in the sales process of like what was important to them understanding the nuances and the differences between people in different countries but that's that's about it okay and yeah what sort of tools do you use to really increase the number of lead generations for the number of leads for your, for your client, for the real estate agents or realtors, you know, what are things that really do work? Cause I'm pretty sure after getting a lot of experience over time, you learn a thing or two, you learn the nuances and you develop more strategies to get more leads. I mean, there's not much else that goes into it other than Facebook ads and um, a lead capturing medium. So you can either choose to use some kind of, um, landing page creation tool like ClickFunnels to, to capture leads or you can use something like a chatbot which the tool that I use is ManyChat um, mm-hmm. so that's literally all it is it's well it's not like there's a lot that goes into those two things but Facebook ads and chatbots is okay. is the two, is the two, two tools um, that you use to generate all, all the leads. But how important is the actual ad copy or the creative itself for the initial click to get the process going? 
Yeah, that's ex that's extremely important. That's like one of the main variables that contributes to a lead being generated. Um, and so that's just, yeah, the, the, the ad copy and the images that we use is just kind of an accumulation of everything that we've tested up until this point, which is like just about two years of running running ads for, for the real estate industry. Um, so it's just an iterative process. Like that's the best thing about Facebook um, and running Facebook ads is that you see the data straight away of what ad is converting better over the next ad. And it can literally be something as simple as like one word different, a different color, a different, um, yeah, a different layout of, of that image or like a different headline. And so it's just really an, an iterative process of figure, figuring out what combination in your, in your ad and creative is, yeah, it's producing the most leads. And eventually over time, you do want to scale naturally, right? So cool. and yeah. it's very difficult to do, I think everything in marketing, you know, if you're doing SEO, SEO, working on the social media, personal brand, if you know, if you can find real estate agents through that way, you guys do ad copy, copy itself, creatives. There's so many things that you have to do. So in, in your operation, what did you do to scale yourself and to get more work? Yeah, I, I kind of reached that point about six months ago. And um, I what I did is I looked for a coach and a mentor that I could work with because um, my end goal is to sell my marketing agency mm -hmm. um, and to be able to build a business that can be sold is very different than running a business that's just a cash machine that is paying the bills for now. Um, so what I did is I found a coach, um, the, the only one that I could find that had sold a marketing agency in the past. And I knew if I did that, what I was going to learn from them, I was going to learn everything that I needed to know about hiring team members, building systems and protocols and things like that. So yeah, that's what I did. Like I, I always, um, one thing that's super important is whenever you want to learn something or whenever you want to achieve a certain result, just pay a coach or a mentor that has already achieved that result to teach you how to do it. Like it's really simple. So that's what I did. Um, and just started to um, learn the art of building business systems and, and processes, building team training, um, how to hire VAs effectively. Um, and yeah, that's the first, that's the, the first things I started to outsource was my prospecting and like daily outreach then it moved on to elements of my service delivery. Um, and it's something that I'm still working on every day. So naturally in the beginning, you might be forced to do everything yourself, be that solopreneur, learn how to yep. close the sell, learn how to do the marketing, Facebook ads, et cetera. But as you start to grow, you're going to have to learn another aspect of business, which is just automating everything, creating systems in play so you can devote your time to more important things. Yeah. Damn. So that's like, that's definitely like next level stuff. So I, I, want, I want to call down on one more question. What do you think is the most challenging thing as a social media marketing agency owner? I would say um, service delivery and scaling service delivery and managing that. Um, yeah, I, that, that's the element of the business that has the most moving parts. Um, and it's one of the hardest things to outsource effectively um, and profitably. There's a, there's a bunch of different ways that people teach it, like taking on team members, how to, how to pay them or hiring VAs. Um, and that's one of the elements that's the most complicated. So I think, I think efficiently delivering your service um, mm -hmm. without you being involved is definitely tricky. That's probably the hardest part. Yeah. And there's always a saying that if you can find someone who can do, you know, 60, 70, 80% of your work, and you can devote your time to other important things and that's going to be worth it. Of course, it's not going to be exactly the way you do it, but over time, you, you definitely, you definitely can, you know? And Absolutely. so Liam, I don't want to take too much of your time here. So if people want to learn more about you, learn more about, you know, how to develop these systems in play, how to create their own social media marketing agency, where can they check you out? Um, I think the best, place to check me out would be my Facebook group, um, which is just called Real Estate SMMA. So if you search that up on Facebook, it'll be probably the first Facebook group that pops up. Um, and that's where I'm putting out the most content, most regularly, just sharing a bunch of stuff about day-to-day -day agency stuff, dropping heaps of free value, free training. So yeah, if you want to check me out, that would be the best place to tune in. Dope. And just one more thing, actually, just one thing popped up to mind. How yeah. important are testimonials? Do you know, after every job, is it required for you to get a testimonial so you can get more authority and not rely on, 
you know, basically it'll be a good way to have authority in your business and, you know, get 100%. more, get more business. hundred percent. If you can get a testimonial, get one, it's never going to hurt. Um, and the more you can incorporate your testimonials video or written into your marketing material, into your funnels, into your landing pages, the, just the more, it, the easier it is to sell to someone because there's that credibility there. There's a track record. Um, and yeah, it's just way easier to sell it to someone when you've got good mm -hmm. testimonials. So hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Definitely believe that if you're doing a service or if you have a product, having that authority, having that reputation is almost everything. And it can speak for itself, you know, it'll become a lot easier for you, for anyone to get more business from that. So that's definitely a gem there. So Liam, it was definitely a pleasure. And thank you so much for being on the show. No worries. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me on. Dope. Thank you.